presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, Zach Wright and Brian Dunstan talk before shining in the derby. Vladimir Mitsov, the team comes first. Keith Langford and the art of scoring. Simply the best, Rudy Fernandez. And of course, the MVP of the round and the top three plays. It's tough to arrive in a team halfway through the season. Even tougher, probably, if that team is Panathinaikos Athens, a well oiled machine. Zach Wright came to Athens in February, and in less than two months he has earned the faith of all his teammates, the coaching staff and the fans. Zach started this Turkish Airlines EuroLeague season playing for Broza Baskets Bamberg, but even after moving to Panathinaikos, he has maintained his high standards and consistency when playing. I'm just a piece, you know, it's a piece to the puzzle. I just, whatever I try to do, you know, I'm, uh, I use my explosiveness, you know, passing the ball, attacking the rim. I just try to help the team using my attributes, you know. I'm a, like an average all around player. Not like great at everything, but just, you know, I try to be a consistent and maintain as a, as an equal level player. Like many of his peers, Zach actually started out playing another of the top US sports before eventually discovering that basketball was the one for him. I actually grew up playing American football, but um, growing up the weather was really hot in Texas, you know, so I chose to play basketball. I kind of played both, but once I got to high school, I was just like only basketball, focusing on that. And plus, like I grew when I was little, I was tall, and then I just stopped growing. So those guys were too big to play football, so I, I just gave it up. <laughs> I was a quarterback and like a safety, so kind of like being a point guard on the team. I wasn't that good when I first started, you know. I was good around the neighborhood, but when it came to like team basketball, you know, I kind of grew up playing playground basketball. And, and since once I figured out that I could play basketball and I wanted to be better, that's when I just stuck with it and worked hard. Basketball is his full-time job, but in his free time, he likes to dedicate himself to other things. I actually make music, like making beats and stuff like that, so I play the piano, so I've been doing that for, for years, so that's one of my hobbies that I do in my spare time. Faith and religion also play a big part in Zach's life. I have faith in God and, and you know, I'm a Christian man. I think that stuff just helps me as a person, you know, and to keep a positive attitude because I've been through a lot and just to always keep a smile on my face. A positive vibe that helps make the atmosphere in the team a good one. I think I just took a photo of, of Mike and uh, Dia Medidas and caught them sleeping on the plane. Everybody, you know, we do stuff like that, just small little jokes, but there's millions of things these guys do. And this is a funny team, so I enjoy being here. Dunstan is one of the best big men of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, despite this being his first season in the competition. The man from Kentucky has slotted in perfectly to the reigning champion's system of play, and although it wasn't easy, he knew perfectly well the prestige that came with wearing the Olympiakos Piraeus jersey. I know the history of the team. I know some of the former players, and uh, you know I know what uh, the the pride that that, uh, that comes with putting on this jersey. And I just try and go out and represent the the team, and the city, uh, and the club as, as much as I can. 
On the eve of the playoffs, Bryant's statistics really are impressive. He has a total of 244 points, 122 rebounds and 35 blocks, but it is never enough. I'm never satisfied. Um, there's always something to improve on and I just uh, hope to continue to get better as, as the games go on. Being in the right positions, playing better uh, on-ball defense, rebounding a little bit more, um, you know, everything, everything. Despite being just 203 centimetres tall, Bryant is a great inside player. He scores and dunks, but his main strength lies in another area of the game. I think blocking shots is more, uh, more satisfying for me. Uh, dunking, you know, it's good, it gives energy for the team, but uh, I feel like blocking a shot and playing defense is, uh, is more important. When the player goes up, you have to make sure you're in the right position. Um, and also, there's just effort, you know. Um, a lot of times, people, people have jumping ability, uh, but they don't, they don't actually go up and block the shot. I credit most of my dunking ability to my long arms, uh, more than my jumping ability, but uh, it's, it's definitely a rush. Olympiakos Pireos are still in the chase for a three-peat. Bryant will give everything he has to take the club into the history books of the EuroLeague. Knowing that this is the top level and knowing that everybody's going to be coming at us, uh, giving us uh, their best games, uh, is very important to, to, to come out and, and play with a high energy and, and a lot of passion. The Peace and Friendship Stadium was once again the site of the greatest basketball event in Greece, the never-ending derby between Olympiakos Piraeus and Panathinaikos Athens, a head-to-head -to, -head to decide who would finish third in Group E. I expect the atmosphere to be crazy, um, and I, I expect the game to be really intense. It's kind of, kind of fitting that it would come down to that, uh, the last game in the top 16 to be against uh, Panathinaikos. It's going to be a fight, definitely, definitely. After 30 minutes of tension, it all came down to the last period. Panathinaikos's Zach Wright scored to lead by eight points. The Reds responded with three three-pointers by Kostas Lukas, who tied the score with 60 seconds remaining. With 25 seconds left, Vasilis Panoulis found the layup to take Olympiakos up by two. Lukas Mavrokefalidis tied with a great dunk. When Olympiakos had to inbound the ball, there were just 4.7 seconds to go. The pass went to Spanoulis. Winning triple came with 0.5 seconds left. Olympiakos won 68-65. He is Seska Moscow's luxury sixth man. Now in his second season with the Russian team, his fourth overall in EuroLeague, Vladimir Mitsov has modelled himself perfectly to the needs of his coach, Ettore Messina. When I signed Ceska, he, when he called me, uh, actually he told me what he wants from me, to start from the bench, to put energy. He knows me that I can do a lot of things on the court. Knowing when to make an impact in the game is not something that should be underestimated. In our team, we have a lot of players who cannot start from the bench. Go inside after, I don't know, five, six minutes, they get cold and it's, they are out of the rhythm. Basketball is team sport, so if we are winning, I just want to feel like uh, useful on the court for the team. Vladimir is a very team-orientated player, and that is the secret to his success. In the way how we are playing and all teams are playing on the Somehow when you have a lot of uh, players who drive, if you, if you stay wide on the court, uh, usually ball come to you. Or you shoot, or if uh, defender go very hard on you, you may close out the uh, offense. I think this is my best strength. 
In order to obtain the best possible results, he's working hard on improving two particular skills. Shoot for three-point and pull-up shots. Because when you are very young, I start with tennis. To practice, uh, you don't know if you're gonna grow up and become a big guy or you're gonna stay, for example, small and play point guard. So everybody has to know how to dribble the ball. So I never uh, rely on my shot. I always go for the layup. And then uh, when I start playing uh, professional basketball, I saw it's not so easy to go inside because you have a lot of big uh, guys and uh, strong under the basket. So then I start shooting. Taking his inspiration from one man in particular. Poderog is number one. We are not quick. I'm not like the fastest player on the court. I'm slow, but you have to use your brain, you know, to read defender. It's not everything about the speed. So that's what I'm trying to, to be. I mean, to try to be like him. To be an all-around player requires a special talent. And Vladimir is not the only one within the team. You have a lot of really good players, but also you have a lot of players who are doing small things. For example, in our team, you have Karl Heinz and Victor Hiapa. So it's not everything about the points. Sometimes even coaches are saying uh, you cannot show everything in the stats, you know, some, some things what they are doing. So I like that kind of players. This season is no different to any other. And Seska are fighting to win the title they missed out on in London last year. And there are several reasons why this season they have an even better chance. Uh, first of all, we are one more year together. We have a lot of good individual players and we have a bigger rotation on the band. So that, I think this is a big advantage uh, if we are comparing to the other teams. Vladimir arrived in Moscow after several seasons in Italy, which is even further motivation to play the Final Four. If you go in, back in Milano, for sure, we have a lot of friends who will come to see me and to support me, so I like that. And there is a curious ritual that Vladimir carries out before every match since he has been in Moscow. Last year I was cleaning my apartment before the game. I had that thing because one time I did it, I played good and then okay, I started doing that. My wife was saying I'm really happy because you play twice per week and our apartment is every time clean. <laughs>
you know, I'm six foot three. I'm not a huge guy, so I'm having to finish over guys, you know, so much bigger than me. When we're playing, you know, I can hear the guys on the floor or I can hear the other team's coach saying, you know, no left, no left, don't let them go left. And, you know, you can plan for it, but until you're actually in front of me and you can feel, you know, what I'm about to do, you know, you never, guys aren't prepared. So there's a handful of guys I had trouble with, but, you know, if I can be isolated and get to my left hand, it's, it's been pretty successful for me. To be the go-to guy brings with it responsibilities and pressure. Being a scorer, it's, um, it's, it's one of those things where it's like hit or miss, you know, because a lot of people, you get you get knocked for being a scorer, but at the same time, people love that you score so many points. So, uh, you know, a lot of times I hear, oh, well, all he does is score. Well, if it was that easy, then everybody would, everybody would do it. You know, I take it a challenge upon myself. As I get older and uh, as I explore different parts of my game, you know, not only have I scored, but, you know, I lead my team in assists. It's another thing that's funny because a lot of people say, well, I don't play defense. Obviously, I'm not going to be the guy that you put on the other team's main weapon, but I'm definitely not the weak link. If people who really know basketball and they look at the tape, you know, they'll see that, you know, Keith Lane was an all-around player. A complete player who is motivated by a desire to match one of the absolute stars of the competition. If there's one guy that I've, I've really probably think of and, and try to, you know, I'm in direct competition with, I'll probably say Basilis uh, Spinoulis. Whenever I'm on the floor and I'm able to play against him, um, you know, it, it raises my level. I'm checking to see what he did or, you know, comparing myself to see if I can do what he did. He's been the main reason for his team's success and I feel like I can be that kind of guy as well. Among the many features that make Keith stand out from the other champions, there is an unusual ritual. He changes shoes between the first and the second half. You know, I started back in high school, you know, was wearing these, these shoes that I always wear. I got a new pair and I didn't tell anyone, I didn't tell my mother, and uh, came out, was just playing awful, had these new shoes on. Going into halftime of the game, my mother is standing there waiting on me before I walk in the locker room, and she's like, take those shoes off right now, and go put them. So I take the shoes off, put on my other shoes, and you know, lo and behold, I have a great game, play well, and so it just, from then on out, I've always done it. A star that was a regular fan for a few weeks due to a muscle injury, a slightly superstitious supporter. The Fenerbahce game, I was working out late. I had missed almost the first two quarters, and I go to my phone to check <laughs> check the, the live score, and we're winning by 14, and so I'm like, all right, I'm going home, so I'm not gonna watch the game, because I wasn't watching, and we were winning, so I'm like, okay, let me just not watch it. So I, I checked the score with about five minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm good. Energy, creativity, skill, and athleticism. They are all words that suitably describe Real Madrid's top class player, Rudy Fernandez. Over the last three seasons, we have seen him doing everything you can possibly imagine on a basketball court. And yet, that is still not enough for him. I try to improve in, in everything in the core, um, probably. Um, my, my dribbling is part of my game and, and I'm so happy about my basketball. Try to, to help my teammates in rebounds, in assists, in defense. Rudy has just turned 29 and this is his fourth season in EuroLeague, his third in Madrid. He was named the 2006-2007 EuroLeague Rising Star and named to the 2012-2013 All-EuroLeague First Team. But that has taken away none of his determination to keep improving and he remains very modest. Every year I try to be better. It's a tough, tough uh, for every player to play good in, in this tournament. 
a lot of teams have a lot of experience more than me. But I think Real Madrid and, and myself, um, we play very good and we try to, to be better every, every game. His EuroLeague debut came in 2006-2007. Perhaps, like the first love, you never forget your first season. Also because Rudy has sweet memories of that time. A long time ago, when we played against Unicaja de Málaga, in Málaga, I played with Juventud, and we win by, by one in, in the last second. I think it's my, my best memory right now. Away from basketball, the guard lives a quiet and peaceful life, which is his recipe for success when it comes to giving his best on the court. With my family and my friends, Rudy is a, a, jo a joke man. I have to improve in, in everything in my life, but I'm so happy to, to be with my friends and family and be together. Back to the basketball. So far, it has been an excellent season for the Spanish team. The explanation may seem simple, but making it happen was not. The secret is the uh, good connection. I think we are um, like a family of the core. I think when we play together, we play better. We, we play like a team. Obviously, having the right team chemistry in the locker room is an added weapon that not every team has. But the real secret to Rudy's and the other players' success is their passion for the game. When I was younger, I played basketball. I enjoyed this game. I think it's the best sport in the world because it's a lot of energy. Uh, sometimes in soccer, sometimes the, team, uh, the game is boring. But in basketball, every time is exciting. Justin Dentman is the B-Win MVP for the third time this season, after claiming the honour also in round five of the regular season and in round six of the top 16, thus wrapping up a fantastic first Turkish Airlines EuroLeague by taking Jalgiris Kaunas to an outstanding 87-80 win over Real Madrid. Dentman scored 36 points, a new team mark for points in a game made by an outstanding 7 for 11 three-pointers, setting also the competition record for most three-pointers in a season with 74. He also made four of five two-pointers and seven free throws without mistakes. By adding five rebounds, three assists and two steals, Dentman reached a performance index rating of 40, leading all the players in the last round of the top 16 for this season. And now let's check out the top three plays of the week. Number three, Krasnodar, Russia. A quick inbound pass from Mantas Kalnietis and Valery Likodi heads straight to the basket. Detonates a brutal dunk. Valery Likodi. Number two, Piraeus, Greece. Team basketball at its finest. Kostas Lucas to Brent Petway to Brian Dunstan for the slam. Brilliant improvised pass from Petway and Dunstan. What a finish. Number one play of the week from Piraeus, Greece. Final seconds of the final game of the top 16. The game is tied. Not anymore. Vasilis Spanoulis with a buzzer-beating game-winning triple from way downtown to settle one of the most intense local rivalries in the world of professional sport. It is Vasilis Spanoulis. All the stations on the road to Milan are now known. The stage is set for the 2014 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague playoffs. Four mouth-watering series tip off this week, featuring seven former champions, including the last five EuroLeague winners and one newcomer. The playoffs begin in Spain, where FC Barcelona and Real Madrid, respectively, will host their series openers on Tuesday. 
Barcelona, which won top 16 Group E, will square off against Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul, which has reached this stage of the competition for the first time. Madrid meets two-time defending champions Olympiacos Pireus in a rematch of last season's title game in London. The other two series tip off on Wednesday in Italy and Russia. EA7 Emporio Armani Milan hosts Maccabi Electra Tel Aviv. And Group F champ Seska Moscow takes on Panathinaikos Athens. Milan is also aiming to become the first team to play the final four on its own court since Panathinaikos in 2007. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.